Here I am doing the thing I, I would love to never do again. I'm taking you on a, uh, a, a, a virtual tour, I guess, a visual tour of the West. I do this just because my, um, uh, <laughs> actually, I can't remember who asked about it, but I don't know if they were Western or not. I forget who it was, and I wrote, so I wrote down unknown, so apologies to whoever that was. You can remind me at some time, <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, mention you. But um, anyway, would you, would you mind, this is the question, would you mind talking a little about the old Western artists? And I don't remember if you said old or not, but I wasn't interested in talking about modern painters. I don't really do that. I try to avoid that, as you probably have noticed. Uh, and um, but this is a um, just a review of some of the work of the Western guys. I've seen them since I was a kid. Uh, you get reacquainted with them out in the West, out in the um, yeah. You know, once you come out east, uh, it, from a different point of view. And uh, but one of the funny stories is is one. I think it's a book called Seven to Seventy by a guy named Simmons who decided to go out west, maybe planning to be a cowboy painter. And I forgot to look up his uh, work to see if he actually was. It's like I'm going to whistle today. <laughs> this is cool. Hmm. Um, anyway, uh, and uh, Simmons describes his trip out west and sees shootings in taverns and, among other things, uh, along the railroad track of a very, very cold winter. He, uh, he sees people frozen to the... Uh, to the to the next to the railroad tracks and uh, sees the feet of ducks having had the top of them having it was a sudden freeze and having had their themselves frozen into the lake these uh, wolves had eaten the t <laughs> the sitting ducks I guess you would say and uh, you know cattle frozen with their their breathing the air they were breathing having frozen their faces down so. <laughs> They became covered with this sheet of ice. Uh, I, I'm telling the story poorly. I'm sure I haven't looked it up recently, but it's one of those things. So that's my, you know, the the trip west was apparently a really a really um, inviting one. And I, you know, it was certainly about money. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, interest in Western art, and let's say in the West, and bringing bringing pictures back. I know a lot of people were illustrators uh, doing it for that reason. And uh, so uh, it has a fascinating history. Uh, that book, Seven to Seventy, is an interesting read. I wish I could tell you, uh, he was a guy, he, Simmons, I believe, was maybe one of the, of the 10 Boston painters, uh, the 10 uh, that included the Boston School guys. Um, and there again, I'd have to refresh myself. I, I lose track of who they are at about six. So, uh, so Here's a little bit about the uh, Western artists, uh, nowhere near definitive. I think there's one called Caitlin that starts right at the beginning, who was painting Indians with a very primitive style. And um, I haven't looked this up in any kind of detail. This is just the stuff I know, and I dug up pictures of the people I knew. So um, here we go. It's going to start with Bierstadt. Um, Bierstadt, and I'm giving you dates of these guys' birth. So Bierstadt was born in 1830, and everybody in this thing are born. This is 19th century painting in America. Bierstadt, of course, was the uh, Hudson River School type painter. He was trained in Europe. Uh, he was, I think it was German training. And um, uh, he, he was, as I understand it, he was uh, an, an, an immig Im he immigrated to the States with his parents, and then he went back to Europe to get some training as a painter. And uh, but Bierstadt uh, painted a few pictures uh, of the Indians, uh, the buffalo hunt here, as you can see. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, the work that was being done at that time, I mean, this stuff here is the kind of thing that you're seeing with people like Fromentin and, uh, you know, some of the Orientalists. And uh, uh, in some ways, this is as is, 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 is nice as um, you'll find with the Messonniers and the other horse painters out in uh, in the days of Napoleon. But uh, the uh, next group of guys, though, are uh, were now born like 20 years later, and um, George DeForest Brush has that background as an academic, and uh, he f has fascinating visual ideas. But uh, you, you can see a little bit of what you would want to probably be the uh, 
think of as the as the um, um, you know at least some level of visual uh, connection for um, N.C. Wyeth. I didn't include N.C. Wyeth here because I've shown his stuff recently, but he did he definitely definitely did a bunch of nice uh, oh Western illustrations. Um, and uh, with including Indians, and you see the um, you see the uh, head of the boat, even the Indian types, appear to be his. So, so that's George DeForest Brush, uh, uh, very very well trained painter. This guy was uh, was uh, trained uh, roughly the same way as um, as a say a, a Paxton, and uh, this is this is very impressive. I want to say he was a student of. Uh, um, at the Beaux Arts in Paris, and I don't know who would have headed it up then. I don't know if it was already Jerome. I don't think it would have been. In fact, I'm sure it wouldn't have been. I shouldn't say that, but I'm, yeah, I, I take that back. It's possible. But you can see the training. This is academic. This is an academically trained uh, painter. And uh, and then you go to Sharp, who also has that background. Sharp apparently is the one of the top. Well, several people I'm going to show you are are, are the founders of the Taos School, or the Taos, uh, uh, what they call the Taos Ten. But the guys who founded that that art colony in uh, in New Mexico. But he has that a similar academic background. But you can see this move is toward impressionism already, and uh, toward that you know the the the. You know, really, the atmospheric beauty, if you want to call it that, just related to color, but um, sharp. So, don't expect me to say a whole lot. By the way, I've never been much of a follower of the, of the cowboy painters, although I have to say I took it upon myself, having been out to Helena, Montana, and seen the works of Russell. There's a Russell, probably a Russell museum, out in Montana. As I said before, you know, I was born and raised out in the Denver area, so I, got, I made my way around a bit. And uh, but I always preferred Remington uh, to Russell. It took me a while after to see, um, but I think it was to see Remington. I saw, uh, I saw. I'm sorry, I saw Russell first, and so it took me a while to find Remington. But uh, I like his picture sense better. I like the fact that he thinks in terms of mass. Uh, Remington's a little less so uh, in that way. Maybe you could argue just a little bit more like certain of the uh, Messonnier types in. Uh, uh, in uh, Paris at the time. By the way, these two guys, I can't get, <laughs> it's very difficult to find out what their training was. And they're not, they're not untrained painters. They're not self-taught, but it's certainly hard for me. Maybe somebody has something. I certainly, I, I didn't do any more digging than, Wik than Wikipedia, so that may be the deficiency. Um, but, uh, so this is Russell. And uh, certainly you'll see the influence uh on um, uh, of the of the Hudson River School and the luminous ideas, but more so I I think in Russell than in uh, than in Remington. Uh, is uh, fun pictures. Uh, uh, you know I've never modeled myself in any way after their work, but um, but still fun pictures. Here that here's a nice feeling for the luminous um, for the luminous information. Uh, that, uh, as I said, Bierstadt and the uh, the whole Hudson River School was into, and, um, and so that's by the way that's Frederick Edmund Church and those guys. Um, so anyway, but that's that's yeah whatever. <laughs> this is their stuff. Very 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 impressive. Um, you know, very very beautifully made and um, and pretentious. It's it's the kind of stuff you'd expect when the money's good. People that people rise to the occasion. Um, if as long as the, if the culture is in good taste, if the culture has uh, some, you know, if there's enough people who are buying the buying public, so if the public generally, uh, the culture generally uh, is good, uh, the art will rise. And then there's Irving Kaus, and again you're seeing that uh, t that background. This is another one of those Taos guys, but he has a background. And again, I think uh, the uh, uh, George DeForest Brush. I think he has a similar background with. Uh, oh man, I gotta think of that again. I just realized that Sharp was also one of the Cincinnati boys. He was born in Cincinnati. Went to the McMichael School. I should go back to Sharp and look at him with you for a second. I completely forgot about that. Uh, there he is. 
But he was a, uh, so he would have been one of the Duvenac boys as well, along with uh, uh, Joseph de Camp. Uh, and I want to say, these guys were all born about the same time as the Boston School Painters I've talked to you about, um, the top three. Uh, so, and I believe 59 was the same year as, uh, I want to say for sure, I think that's right, uh, the same year that uh, that Joseph de Camp was born. So, uh, yeah, so he has that same background, studied at the Royal Academy in Munich and uh, and after the McMichael School. So he had a, really exactly the same background as Joseph de Camp. So, um, uh, so Irving Kaus, though, is uh, that, uh, again, the, the uh, Ecole de Beaux-Arts. And I think he also had a background with, uh, maybe with the uh, Julian Academy and those things. Again, I'm not, I'm not uh, I don't really want to be your tour guide to this. You could look this up yourself. But what he is, is he does, what he does is he illustrates the use of the academic uh, uh, mindset uh, in, uh, in uh, going, when he, you know, when going west, much like <clears throat> George de Forest Brush. And then th there's, there's Rungius, and uh, Rungius also was German trained. Uh, uh, I can't give you details about that, but Rungius again has that big brush, you know, that uh, the, the the massing orientation. And he's got a great sense of of of, of, of what I call pattern. The uh, the, the dark, you know, the, the play of the darks, and, uh, and the, but, the, but the, just the very, in, the, the interest he creates with the masses, with spots, uh, it's very impressive. In this case, you're very grand, and many others like it. Uh, from the time I was a kid in Colorado, I, I was aware of Blumenshine and, and Euphorb, and I think Blumenshine was the first guy. I was seeing pictures like, well, they were so full of light, I'd never seen anything like it. I felt like my eyes were gonna burn out of my head. And I couldn't find the particular picture that they, that's in Denver, so I don't have it here, but, but this use of, of, of mass, but with, with full color, full, full chroma, which really doesn't come through as well here. Uh, it's, it's just really quite remarkable. Um, there's a, there are a number of nice, um, pieces of Western art there, uh, including some new guys, some, some I shouldn't say new, most, some of them are pretty old, these guys that are still alive today, but uh, some very nice work. Um, um, so it's worth a visit to the Denver Museum. It's one of those things I wish these local museums would do, like in Boston, Boston for the Boston School in Denver. It's a great place to feature Western art and to make a great collection of it. And you know, sort of, uh, it, it really is exhausting to watch all these museums try to go cosmopolitan and be everything to everybody, you know. Um, it doesn't bother me that there's a decent, well-rounded collection, but it bothers me when they don't actually feature the locals, uh, um, their local greats in any kind of a unique way. Um, Boston always had these guys all over the place, the Boston School guys, but they never had a featured place for them like they do now. Um, any of what they do now is, you know, I'd love to see it done better, um, but yeah. So uh, let's just move along here, Blumenshine, and then uh, and you can see these dates. These guys were born in 74 and 76, that's 1874. Um, and Euphor is the same way. And by the way, this is the beginning of, um, and, to, and by the way, both these guys are also, all three of these guys, by the way, they're all from the uh, Taos movement, uh, the Taos 10, the, the founders of that movement down there. And they're beginning to be, uh, this, their work is being, has began about this point and I'm guessing this point was like the 30s, they begin to be mannerist, um, and meaning to say they start having the influence of the art uh, deco on them. You know, massive forms, uh, very, you know, more stylized. It's not, a, it's not oppressively stylized by any means, um, and I don't mean to say that it is, but, but, um, but Blumenshine, and I think you can begin to see the, the, uh, the grand forms, the big forms, uh, in, in at least these two. And, uh, and then with the other guys, um, that really gets to be quite impressive, quite, uh, quite a delight, really. Uh, it has a bit of mannerism. Uh, it bothers me so little if the person's work is also true. And uh, to the extent that it becomes distorted uh, for the sake of, um, of the mannerism, it's, I find it, less, it less, gives me less long-term pleasure. In other words, they just don't last in my own uh, imagination like guys who are more true do. 
But you can see the uh, modeling of the mountain, t the background here. There are a number of Canadian painters. I've been into those, and don't ask me to do a show of Canadian painters. But those, there's a group of Canadian painters, several of which have the same uh, heavy manner that's really quite interesting. I believe they're all from the 30s. And uh, so there was Fetchin also there coming in later um, and um, was uh, making tons of money off the Hollywood slash uh, Taos uh, world. Sort of a lot of rock star kind of uh, portraits and things like that. But um, yeah, but he, he really uh, served his time there and uh, did some very, very interesting things. Um, and uh, I don't know why I'm... I have, I have so little to say about these guys. I mean, all of them are being, by this time, they're all being heavily influenced by the color of the Impressionists, by Monet and all those things. And the last, and the last one I'll show you is Payne, who was an Art Students League uh, guy. Uh, no, no, I take that back. I think it was Chicago Art Institute, but where else did he go? He does, he does take credit for the Art Students League for being his uh, alma mater as well, so I don't know which one he really was primarily. I guess he taught in New York for a while. Um, so maybe that was the one. The gate gave him his big uh, advantage. He liked to talk about being uh, being self-taught, and uh, but uh, then you read other things where you can say that, but we're all self-taught, aren't we? According to Benson. So uh, so there it is. Uh, whoever you are in the world of the unknowns and anonymous is out there, which in this case is my fault. I looked and looked and couldn't find you, and I could start stopped wasting time. You're not a waste of time, but the, the hunt for that, your name, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, you know, the, um, the West provided a very natural outlet for, you know, for those guys who have a feeling of grandeur, very, very, I think a very masculine thing. I may be wrong that that's, that's a factor, but I think it is. Um, you know, the Michelangelo thing, the force and power, you know, that whole thing. Um, any number of painters, including da Vinci, are considerably more about grace. And, um, uh, and, um, and uh, certain others like, like Titian land in between somewhere. But this, the, you know, the, the West really did provide, you're looking at scenes like this, at that moment for, for really, uh, for really uh, 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 projecting that, that the strength, you know, of, 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 of the... Uh, of the uh, Western landscape, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis the little guy. You know, this reminds me a little bit of that Chinese uh, comment about landscape. I think uh, what they said is that uh, a, a mountain should be a foot high, the, um, a tree should be uh, some number of, of inches, and a man should be the size of a peanut. And that was some sort of a model that was given. I don't know if that was in Bowie or where that was, but uh, Something I read somewhere, but the um, but this rather resembles that, doesn't it? And again, that would be very much about that sense of putting man in his place, rather vis-a-vis -vis nature, right, and getting him down to a size. You can still see and enjoy his presence, but you begin to see how how uh, big that world we live in is, and, and and how relatively small man is in relation to it. So. Um, I think that's what I'll end with. I wondered if there's a, uh, a group of pictures here that I uh, especially favor, but no, I don't actually. So I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, leave it at that. And uh, thank you for your fun uh, invitation to be tempted to do this. Uh, I do know the numbers don't support me continuing to do this. So uh, the number of people that want to watch these things. So, um, uh, and I know you're looking for more information about painting itself and, and and, and methodologies and things like that. Um, so uh, we'll we'll try to bring more focus to that as we go along now in the near future. And, uh, and in the meantime, do comment, subscribe, share, and uh, and and donate it as you can. Uh, uh, we got a ways to go to catch up with all these now almost 180 videos that that we've produced for you. In any case, have a great week. Uh, see you next time.